We couldn't get enough of him, so we brought him back. Joining us once more is Kelsey Hightower, developer advocate at Google Cloud. Kelsey, talk to us about how serverless solutions help developers. Yeah, so I think serverless solutions for people new to serverless, it's kind of like we've learned a lot of patterns from four or five years of Kubernetes. And all the things you need to do to provide that higher level interface that you give all your developers or that you enjoy working with every day, that's where serverless attempts to start. So we take some of those patterns and we give people the smallest interface that they want to do. So if you think about it, if a file gets uploaded to a Google Cloud Storage bucket, you can just invoke your business logic and execute your code for you. Now people want serverless, but they also want containers. How is Google enabling developers to have both the velocity of serverless and the flexibility of containers? That's the thing that I'm probably the most proud of. So when serverless is most introduced for first introduced to most people, they always thought about it as functions as a service. You write a single function, an event comes in, it calls your function. But there's a lot of existing business logic that needs a little bit more than just a single function. Maybe there's some bootstrapping code, you got to set up things like logging, but a little bit more flexibility and your choice of runtime. So what we decided to do was take a lot of the learnings from Kubernetes and allow developers to deploy their own Docker containers. So any runtime that you want to use, any business logic that you want, any libraries, and we're going to execute that container just like we do with our cloud functions. So they scale to zero, they scale up quick, and they give you the same serverless workflow that you're used to without abandoning all the good things that come with containers. Nice. You've talked a little bit about you know, serverless isn't brand new. Um, but we're changing the way that we're sort of approaching it. Can you, can you tell us a little bit more about how Google is changing that serverless experience? So I think for us is that our DNA has always been around this idea of this kind of software delivery chain, right? So this idea that when you build a software, we like to build it once, we sign those images, and then we decide where we want them to be deployed. So that means giving people a bit of choice. So typically serverless has been kind of these proprietary cloud platforms. Once you're in there, you're kind of locked in. What we decided to do is make sure that it runs everywhere. So wherever you as a developer want to run, just like most Google tools and libraries, we allow our serverless stack to run wherever you are. So I think what we're doing different here is taking some of the things that worked well in the Kubernetes space and combining them with some of the developer experiences that we know that people are looking for and just combining the two. So flexibility without, the, without losing the trade-offs and benefits of going serverless. That's great. Um, so how does serverless, our serverless offering help our developers and how is it different? I think where it's different is that you get to use a familiar tool chain that has been popularized over the last couple of years, right? So containers are the way most people think about having full control over their own software. Then to be able to take that software and outsource all of the delivery, right? So security, IAM integration, being able to connect to things like Spanner and BigQuery, taking all of that kind of toil away from you and just say, hey, check in your containers and we'll run them for you. So what we're trying to do is kind of make it very seamless from a developer. Once you go from idea to deployed, we're just trying to give you that same DCP experience at the container level. Nice. Now, how do our serverless offerings give developers a more open and portable offering so that customers can potentially move their workloads around? So one thing, the trend that has been really prevalent in GCP is in Kubernetes, we started with Docker, popular open source container runtime, and then we shipped an open source project, Kubernetes, which is the underlying platform for GKE. And then when we thought about entering serverless, so we've had App Engine for it for almost 11 years now, and we decided that let's, what would we do if we wanted to make App Engine be more open? So we decided to start with the Knative project. So Knative has a lot of serverless components you can think of as a serverless toolkit, things like builds, a function framework, and most of that stuff is laid on top of Kubernetes. So what we've done is we've taken the best parts of Kubernetes, again, those design patterns that we talked about, how do I just run my application, We've extracted that out into a high-level set of libraries called Knative, and there's a hosted version we call Cloud Run, and we also give you the ability to run Cloud Run on top of GKE. So the benefit there is that if you need to do some machine learning, you can take that serverless workload and run it on a specialized VM with a GPU or a TPU, so you're no longer restricted to our, just our serverless runtime environments. You now have the whole of GCP opened up to you, even in a serverless context. You touched on this a bit, but a lot of our customers tell us that they have custom requirements like specific runtimes, custom binaries, or workload portability. And more often than not, they turn to containers for an answer. Can you talk about how our GKE serverless add-on allows you to bring serverless to containers? Yeah, so when you think about a lot of these abstractions change over time. We went from mainframe to physical machines to virtualization to higher level platforms like App Engine. What we now have with the container image, this ability to build the code that you want, use the runtime that you want, any version that you want, and now that becomes a portable bit. You can run this on a virtual machine, 
you can run this on GKE, you can run this on Cloud Run, and you can also run it on App Engine. So I think what a developer gets is this ability to truly write once and deploy wherever they want. Now, while we believe Google Cloud is a great place to run all types of workloads, some customers, we know that they need to run on-premises or across multiple clouds, right? So tell us about a little bit more about Knative and its role in giving developers the freedom to move stateless containers pretty much anywhere. Yeah, so our contribution to the ecosystem started with maybe Kubernetes, right? So Kubernetes, over the four or five years, you can see it now, it's deployed and offered by every major cloud provider. Lots of people are already running it on-prem. So it has wide adoption. So our strategy of layering Knative on top of Kubernetes just allows us to kind of reap those benefits. So the tools that you're familiar with, we layer Knative on top. So that gives us that portability framework underneath. So no matter where you're running, whether it's on-prem, different cloud provider, on GCP, you're going to get the same APIs, right? So we talked earlier about automating those APIs. That's what Kubernetes represents. And I've always said this, Kubernetes is a platform for building platforms. And we've chosen to build our newest serverless platforms on top of Kubernetes. Can you talk a little bit more about how Knative provides eventing and integrating events from Google or third-party services so you can really extend your applications? So the big thing to know about Knative is not just Google's project, right? So now we have so many contributors, you know, Red Hat, Cloud Foundry. So a lot of the things that we've seen in the eventing space, like what is an event, how should we accept it, a lot of those open protocols like cloud events, all of that's supported inside Knative. So Knative gives you a couple of components. We call Knative Serving. Run my container, scale it to zero. Start it again when a request comes in. Then you have the event team piece, so there's an event. And what we wanted to do is make event portable. So different cloud providers has a different collection of events, different transports for events. So what we wanted to do is make sure that the event framework was very flexible. If you want to integrate with GitHub or GCP or one of some other service that you have that you defined yourself, that's also included. So what we've done is we've given all of these framework pieces and what we've done with Cloud Run is we've kind of curated the perfect stack for you. Great, and uh, is there a particular way in which uh, we, we're able to solve that problem that you describe of like having you know, all of these things live in all of these different places? Yeah, so I think for us is Kubernetes is super flexible. So with that flexibility allows every cloud provider to do their own integrations. For example, on-prem, we come out of the gate integrating with things like with VMware and F5. So we abstract away some of the differences between all of these platforms. So that's what Kubernetes' job is. Once you have that set of abstractions, things like Knative just sit on top and naively assume that those abstractions are there and then we can get on with building those higher level platforms. So Kubernetes is a huge part of this and the community has been doing this work for over four years, abstracting away the differences between these cloud providers. So whenever you build on top of that, we just inherit all of those benefits. Well, thank you so much again for joining us today, Kelsey. Awesome. Thanks for having me.